but even if uh, they were not the crowdfunding, et cetera, if there was terrorist financing and there was money laundering, then you could apply FinTrack and the criminal code to crowdfunding, right? Without the Emergencies Act. I can't answer that question because I'm not expert enough in FinTrack's legislation. Okay. So I want to talk to you a bit about some crowdfunding. Uh, with respect to crowdfunding, uh, you can agree it's done by way of people donating to a fund online, right? Uh, yes. And people donate to that fund typically to support a cause? I Yes, that's one, yes. And can so, you, you agree with me that some causes set up in crowdfunding are set up for a political cause? I'm sure that's probably true. And can you agree that a protest of a government policy or legislation is a political cause? Well, I, I'm not going to answer your question in my capacity as the Deputy Minister of Finance. I guess I'm going to ask, answer, my, answer your question in my capacity as a citizen. Um, and I guess my answer as a citizen is, yeah, that sounds like it makes sense to me. Right. And can you admit that the GoFundMe and the Give, Send, Go for crowdfunding set up by Ms. Litch and the protesters in Ottawa were a crowdfund set up to support a political cause? Um, well, I guess, you know, as you know well, GoFundMe ended up um, in effect refusing to continue to provide its platform for these funding activities. And we'll so get into that. Crowd, so GoFundMe obviously came to some conclusions about what was underway here that caused them to be uncomfortable enough that they wanted to right. uh, restrict this from their platform. Right, I understand that. But can you agree that when the GoFundMe was set up in January 14th, prior to the protest, prior to them arriving here, that this GoFundMe, this crowdfund, was set up to support a political cause? Well, it was set up to support the, the fundraising activities of the people who were protesting both in Ottawa and I guess across the country. Right, and you agree that the protests are a political cause? Well, they're about a, they're about a political issue, yeah. Right, and so let me just put this to you. This is in uh, one of the uh, reports already that's uh, overview reports that has been put in evidence. And I'm just going to uh, read it to you and then ask you a question about it. Uh, the, go the original GoFundMe on January 14th, as amended later and put into the overview of Fort States this as the reason to donate. To our fellow Canadians, the time for political overreach is over. Our current government is imp read more slowly. Yes, sir. Our current government is implementing rules and mandates that are destroying the foundation of our businesses, industries, and livelihoods. Canadians have been integral to the fabric of humanity in many ways that have shaped the planet. We are a peaceful country that has helped protect nations across the globe from tyrannical governments who oppress their people, while well, now it has happened to us. We are taking our fight to the doorstep of the federal government and demanding that they cease all mandates against its people. Small businesses are being destroyed, homes are being destroyed, and people are being mistreated and denied fundamental necessities to survive. It's our duty as Canadians to put an end to this mandate. It is imperative that this happens because if we don't, our country will no longer be the country we have come to love. We are doing this for our future generations and to regain our lives back. We are asking for donations to help with the cost of fuel, food, and lodging to help ease the pressure of this artist task. But it's a small price to pay for our freedoms. We thank you all for donations and know that you are helping reshape this once beautiful country back to the way it was. So can you agree that premise that I've just read to you for seeking donations? I know speaking as a citizen, uh, you can agree that that's asking for donations to support a political cause, right? I think it's asking for donations to support somebody's particular view about a, about a public issue. Right, and that's a political cause. Well, I'm not going to judge whether it is or not. It's a public policy issue that, that people have a right, perfect right, mm -hmm. to uh, agree with or disagree with. And I guess this 
group of people were out using a crowdfunding platform as a source of raising raising money for it. Right. Obviously, it ended up being pretty problematic because crowd, GoFundMe walked away. And we're going to get into that. So uh, you agree that many people donated to both the GoFundMe and the Give, Send, Go, right? I don't know what the numbers are, how many people donated. And you know that those donations, based on what I've just said to you, were made on the premise of that statement, that the money donated was to be used to support the protest, right? I can't speculate as to why people made those donations or not. I don't and have any access to that information. As the Deputy Minister of Finance, I'm sure you know that before the protesters even got to Ottawa, that on, as of January 25th, the GoFundMe had already raised more than $4.5 million. You know that, right? I do not. I did not know that at the time, no. All right. And I take it you are aware and had some discussion that donations to political causes are a form of freedom of expression as protected under Section 2B of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Did you, were you aware of that? I'm aware that the Charter pr protects the right to free expression. Right. And were you aware that donations to a political cause have been interpreted and continue to be interpreted by the highest court as being part of freedom of expression? Were yeah. you aware of that? Yeah, I, I'm a, look, the issue here, at least in my opinion, is not about donations because nobody acted. Uh, even in the context of the Emergencies Act, um, no one, I mean, the RCMP was, was I think, quite clear and, and publicly clear that their intention here was not to uh, take action on people who had made, uh, relative, in most cases, I think, ve relatively modest donations. So the, th there, there really wasn't action here, um, as best I can detect, action here with respect to, to the activity of making uh, donations. I, I understand that. But the making of the donation, right? You make a donation under the asbestos that it's going to be used for the cause, right? That's, when the, that's how the donation, why the donation is made. You can agree with that. Well, I guess that would be the donor's expectation, whether right. or not it happened or not, right. is something that I can't comment on because I don't know. And so when the government interferes with what is to be done with those funds, do they not, can you not agree that it interferes with those donors' freedom of expression? Can you agree with that? Um, look, the government took a decision that um, these activities were illegal. Right, and we've, we've been having some trouble in establishing what that is, and we're gonna get into that, but I'm going to uh, move on to another part. Uh, this commission's heard evidence that the money from GoFundMe, all right, you talked about it being frozen. It was frozen following a request in a meeting between the city of Ottawa the municipality, the mayor, and the Ottawa Police Service. Are you aware of that? I have absolutely no awareness of that, nor is it relevant to our work in the Department of Finance. Right, but you said it was relevant to, you said it was relevant, just in your own No, testimony. I did not say it was no, no, relevant no, no, no. to our work in the Department question, of Finance. Sir. I did not say that. Sir, let me just finish my question. You had said it was relevant that uh, GoFundMe on their own accord, froze these accounts, right? You, you just said to that. They obviously saw an issue. And you said that just in your evidence while I was examining you. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about it, okay? And you can agree with me that the City of Ottawa and the Ottawa Police Service, they're government entities. That's not debatable, right? They're not federal government entities. Right, I know. And but they don't have anything to do with our job in the Department I, of Finance. I understand. But you can agree that they are government entities. They are provincial and municipal government entities, right? I guess so. If I go back to civics class, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm sh I'm glad that uh, you're you're it was thinking a long about time civics because that's part about uh, what this case is about. Q 
Can you agree that when a municipal government or a mayor of a city or a municipal police service, like the Ottawa Police Service, requests of a, a bank or GoFundMe in this instance to freeze funds, that that is government action? Can you agree with me on that? Just so that I understand what you just said, that where a government entity requests a fund or requests a bank or an institution to freeze private funds of donations, of private bank accounts or anything like that, where they make that request and it's from the government, is that a government action? Well, yes, I think so. I think it's, yeah. Right. And I take it to your knowledge that there's no legislative authority that you know of federally or provincially that would authorize a municipality or a police force to make such a request. Look, all I can do is comment on this from the perspective of A, the Department of Finance and B, the federal government. And the federal government in the Emergencies Act declared that these activities were illegal. As, with, as to your point I, about I, GoFundMe, I, I, I GoFundMe took an independent decision that had absolutely nothing so, to sir, do with, with government action. Sir, the mandate of this commission is to look at the circumstances surrounding the invocation. I understand what the government did. We're trying to find out why, okay? So let me ask you again. To your knowledge, I take it, that you know that there's no legislation in Ontario or federally, all right, that would authorize a municipality or a police force to request an institution, a bank, GoFundMe, to freeze accounts. Can you agree with that? Look, you're asking me questions that we in the Department of Finance have absolutely nothing to do with. You're if saying you want that to you ask have me questions to... about our role in finance, that's fair enough. But, but these questions are, they're not what we do. But you understand financial legislation, do you not? You understand that legislation governs your ministry, right? Of course. Right, and then you also look at the legislation in provinces and you try to make them interact and work together. Is that not fair? Cooperative federalism, I'm sure well, you've heard that principle. Well, with respect to the broadly understood, the operation of the economy and other things, yeah. Right. But and we're not a public safety institution. We're not uh, an institution that um, is responsible for law enforcement in any other in any way. There are lots of other agencies of the government of Canada that are responsible for those things and are responsible for the interactions that you're that you're uh, so drawing attention to. But it's not the Department of Finance. So if that's the case, then why do they even ask you to come to the IRG? Why? I think the answer to that's pretty straightforward. Um, there was a very substantial uh, preoccupation on the part of the government with respect to the economic consequences of the disruptions that were occurring in the country. And our role at the time, uh, we were people doing quite a bit of work on that issue, and that was extremely relevant to okay. the decision-making that was underway so, uh, across the government of Canada I, I, at the time. I understand that. I'm not trying to cut you off, but I'm just trying to stay under my time limit. So it, here's the thing. On February 10th, the IRG minutes that we do have that are unredacted, the Prime Minister advises we have two tracks. He went into it with two tracks. The first was to use general legislative authority, and the second track was to use the Emergencies Act, all right? And I take it, and there was tasks, we have that evidence. Tasks were given to your ministry, tasks were given to other ministries. Uh, I can tell you with respect to the options that were being put forward outside of the Emergencies Act, we don't know what those were because the government's claimed solicitor client privilege in Section 39, Cabinet Confidence, so I have no idea. But I take it that there had been inquiries with your ministry between February 10th and February 14th about what legislation could be used in order to deal with the crowdfunding. Look, right? I don't know whether you were in the room this morning or not, but um, I thought we had a pretty thorough discussion of that 
with the uh, commissions. I understand, council. but and sir, I understand you're asking me questions. But if we're both asking, no, questions, I didn't ask you a question. I get I just, it. I understand, but if we're both asking questions, none of us will have answers. So let me just ask the questions and. We'll go on, all right? So I want to talk to you now about the legislative change versus regulations and orders in council really quickly. And can you you're, agree? You're going to have to make it quick because you're already over your time. Thank you, sir. Um, two points. Uh, the legislative change versus regulations. You said you couldn't uh, deal with this by way of regular legislation through parliament. Why? No, what, I, what we said, I think what both Isabel and I said earlier was... Uh, in the circumstance where our concern was limiting the duration of these disruptions as much as possible, that the legislative process was something that took a considerable amount of time and therefore was not really a very effective instrument uh, for dealing with a situation where time was a significant impact, was a significant determinant of the extent of its impact on the national economy. Okay, but you can agree that the legislative, co the legislative process with parliament as a whole is far more democratic than a meeting in cabinet that's essentially in camera and privileged. It's, there's no debate from opposing parties. These things are then just passed by the executive, right? Like it's, it doesn't represent input from the rest of parliament, correct? Look, I think the government took a decision as the duly elected government of the country to invoke um, a, the Emergencies Act, which is itself a piece of legislation that was through Parliament, and the government took a decision to use that in this circumstance and has been, I believe, scrupulous in how it was used, uh, kept the duration of the Emergencies Act to an absolute minimum. I mean, it was, what, seven, eight days maximum okay. for the whole thing. So I think the government has proceeded in a manner completely consistent with the laws of Canada. I understand. But you can agree that in invoking the Emergencies Act, Parliament, via that legislation, lays out criteria that have to be met to invoke it, Yes, right? but the Emergencies Act had to be... Um, there was a parliamentary process that followed the government's invocation of the Emergencies Act in a manner consistent with the laws of Canada, and that was done. Right, and the documents to date show that because they were able, the NDP, okay, I'm going to ask you maybe you know about this last question. The NDP, before the debate even took place, had already agreed to support the motion, okay? That's in evidence. The question is this. So they support the motion. It goes to the Senate. They get indication that the Senate is not going to vote in their favor. So they pull it. In my submission to you, that's the parliamentary process, right? Because if there was no grounds to invoke it and the Senate was going to revoke it, that's a good process, isn't it? I'm not going to comment on that. It's Didn't think you would. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, I'd like to call on the uh, CCLA, please. <laughs> 